drew you to Nellie? Well, I heard about her from a British friend, actually. She said to me, have you heard of Nellie Bly? She's the kind of woman you write about. And this friend knew that, first of all, I was a diehard fan of pioneering women. And secondly, on the hunt for a subject for a new novel, um, and I hadn't heard of Nellie Bly. I went away to research her and I was instantly hooked. I knew I had the muse for my next book. What caught you about her? Well, Nellie was America's first female investigative journalist. And to get her first big newspaper scoop and to be taken seriously in an industry run by men, she proposed something very daring and extreme that she would feign madness and get committed to the notorious asylum on Blackwell's Island off the coast of New York City. And from there, you know, she if she got out, when she got out, she would expose the conditions. And what really caught my imagination was wondering what kind of a person could do this, especially at the end of the 19th century when women were supposed to be reticent and ladylike. And, you know, I, I really couldn't let go of that. One of the things that you've been asked about and talked about is the fact that this is sort of the beginning of, of what came to be known as stunt journalism. That's right. So, so Nellie's expose pioneered a new journalistic movement called stunt or detective reporting. And it was the acknowledged forerunner of investigative journalism. And I should also add that you know, before Nellie went into the asylum, women journalists were only allowed to report things like society gossip, fashion, theatre and co concert reviews. So Nellie's expose also pioneered a path for women in newspapers, you know, to do serious hard reporting. Um, and she paved the way for successive generations of women reporters to achieve what they did. It's interesting too because even though it's it's labeled as, as stunt journalism, her interest in this in this subject and this this terrible really situation that was was happening was was yes. not a stunt. Nellie felt a tremendous kinship with the marginalized, and um, it was because she had a hard childhood, and I think that taught her, you know, what it meant to be someone who'd given up on joy and belonging. So she had huge empathy. And there had also been brushes with mental illness in her family. And I think that kind of probably sparked her interest, but also made the asylum an even more scary place. You start with her childhood and yes. her development just as a, as a human being. Yes. Um, and you show those glimpses where she saw the the fine line between functioning and and madness that we all sort of can hover on. Exactly. So I felt it was important to write about Nellie's childhood because I needed to explore and to convey what made her that extraordinary person she became. Um, and also there's a lot of play between the very porous line between sanity and madness, you know, that we can all relate to, I think. And of course, you know, what one of the plays is that Nellie would have been judged completely mad by the standards of the time for getting voluntarily committed to an asylum. You know, these places were brutal and dangerous. You also, uh give the background of her childhood that helped give her that sense of of being in a community, but being just outside. So Nellie was born to privilege. Her father was a judge. And probably the defining moment of her childhood was when he died when she was young. And he died without leaving a will, which left his family destitute. And then um, Nellie's mother married and then divorced a violent and abusive drunk. So not only did the family suffer this terrible abuse at his hands, but they had the disgrace of divorce. And I, I think that Nellie really did, you know, she got that outsider's perspective from that sort of fall in grace. And I think at the same time, you know, missing all those things, having to learn to 
work to earn a living, having to do with her material things and education that she'd had before. Those things sort of, you know, blended in her soul and made her the person she became. How did she find her way to journalism? It's, it's, it's a very sort of like sort of sincere way. Uh, yes. that led her to it. So, so she struggled for several years with a series of menial jobs like housekeeper, nanny, servant, um, which she was not satisfied by. And then she read an article in the Pittsburgh Dispatch which changed her life. And the article basically said that women who worked were a monstrosity. And Nellie felt this so deeply and so personally because she and her mother had no choice but to work. So she fired off this protest to the editor of the newspaper. Um, and it was one in a heap of letters on his desk, but it caught his eye because of the passion and conviction with which it was written. And he was impressed and invited her to come and meet him. And then he offered her her first proper job as a serious reporter. One of the things I loved about that story and that you see throughout her career and often in many uh, stories of female trailblazers is that it was a man who yes. was open yes. to being impressed by. Yes. And that is showing that, that, those, uh, that those good people were always that, there despite the difficulties. That, of, is, that is very true. And one thing that I noticed about the men who helped her, um, first of all, Madden, who was, you know, the editor of the Pittsburgh Dispatch, but also Joseph Pulitzer of Pulitzer Prize fame, who owned the New York World newspaper and said yes to her going into the asylum. Um, both men had come up the hard way. They'd come up from nothing. And I think they recognized in Nellie a certain spark and drive that really set her apart from the rest and perhaps reminded them of their younger selves. I didn't realize this un until I, I, I read uh, Mad Woman. She didn't really fully know how she was going to get out of there. No, no, exactly. So Joseph Pulitzer said, you know, we'll get lawyers to try and secure your release, but we can't promise. And as the days went by, as you know, days in that bleak institution passed with no news from Pulitzer or the New York, New York world, Nellie began to have grave doubts. She feared that maybe there'd been some legal issue and the paper couldn't secure her release and had just simply washed its hands of her. We know that she did this and this was sort of her groundbreaking claim to fame in a way, but actually from the beginning of her career as a reporter, she was always seeking to humanize her subjects. And that was yes. not, that was new. No. That was not a part no. of, of journalism really. And not only did she want to humanize her subjects, but she gave a voice and a face to the marginalized in society you know, those who had no visibility, particularly women. And working girls. Yes. Uh, people yes. who were in the shadows. Exactly, exactly. What was the reaction uh, to, to this expose and what did it change or? It turned Nellie into a national celebrity, you know, a sort of fiery celebrity. And her articles led to nearly a million dollars extra being given for the care of the mentally ill all over the country, which was a vast sum in 1887, which was the year, you know, it happened. Um, but seven years later, the asylum closed. I think things improved after Nellie and then they slid back down, which, which is often the way with these reforms and, and the asylum was shut down. But, you know, Nellie did get all this money for them. She, um, you know, started a new journalistic movement and paved the way for women reporters. And she also gave a, a voice and a face to women who had no visibility or status in society. So I think her, her achievement was remarkable. She was born this underprivileged girl and she became a woman who was so far ahead of her time and who changed the world.